we're going to look at the um, Axis 8105 a door station and one of the features um, that is included with the, the Axis optimizer. So it's the plugin related to the, the Axis door station. So it's the 8105 or the 8004. Um, it might not take um, the whole 15 minutes. So it's the actually might be a shorter, shorter FMFF. Um, but one thing that's kind of cool, um, we've all been kind of asking for it for years, is having like a fly-in window and like a call queue with the, oh, I'm not sharing my screen yet. Okay. And he's going to play my Vanna White, I guess, today. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, so one of the features um, we kind of all been um, kind of asking for for a while is having like a maybe a fly up window and also um, you know some kind of call history with uh, door intercoms. Um, typically in the past, you'd have to kind of um, you know think outside the box and do something with like uh, yeah, Vanna um, with the eight, like the ACM. So. Um, that's the, really the only thing that gave you the, the pop-up window. But um, now with the Axis Optimizer, they have a plugin um, that comes with it that um, integrates with the their Axis uh, door intercom. So um, there are a couple things that you kind of want to know. So it only works with the plugin only works with the uh, 2017 R3 or later. Um, and then if you're previous to, I think, 2019 R1, um, you had to be in the administrators group to receive the, crawl, the calls and control the door. So um, now it's just 2019 R1. You don't have to be in an administrator role. And playing around with it, and Jared kind of pointed this out, um, when you think of like verticals, so like in the education K through 12, um, having door intercoms, you know, is useful. And there's actually, you know, most school systems have kind of some kind of door intercom when you come up to the lobby. Um, but looking at the configuration, um, you can't partition out, you know, who receives the calls. So that's kind of a maybe a limitation of of this plugin or the integration with uh, Expertech. Um, so, for instance, let's say you had like two high schools. Um, each high school had a door intercom. If I went to high school one and hit the button, anybody that has the smart client open would receive that call. So, you know, a SRO or a principal at high school too would also, you know, re receive the call from the other school. So that's kind of a limitation right now um, that we probably want to follow up with the, with the product team from Access or whatever. So anyway, let's kind of get into it. Um, Basically, you know, it's a pretty simple setup. Um, you just add it, you know, to the system just like a camera. So if you go to the recording server, there's the device. Um, there's some configuration with the inputs. Um, if you go through the, the manual here, so you can, you can grab the manual. So it kind of shows you how to um, set up the input. So you have to do a, an event input rising and falling. And then you would typically have like a, a lock of some sort tied to it to control the door. There are a couple things in the manual that didn't show up in our smart client for some reason. So this picture here um, shows like a door, just kind of like our ACM, but it's not showing up in our smart client. So like a door status. If you notice here, so this is the actual. 8105, but we don't get that status here. So I'm not sure why we're not seeing that. But anyway, um, let's kind of go through the functionality. So if Dana hits the button, you get a little fly up window, and then I can accept that call. I can have bi directional communication with the person. I can give them access and then I can hang up. 
And then there's some settings within the smart client. So if you go to settings and door stations, so you can receive the calls on the client. And maybe that's one way of maybe partitioning, you know, who gets to fly up. Um, but that would take, you know, some manual configuration. Um, and then you can enable extended access, um, do the, the time for the door to stay unlocked. And then generate um, alarms. So I was playing around with this too, and I couldn't really figure out how to get it to work because it seems like you'd have to have some kind of door status switch, like a door contact. Um, I have a switch connected to it, but it doesn't seem to do anything, even though I'm following the configuration guide. Um, so like a door forced or a door held, and that might be because we don't have a actual door lock connected to it. Um, but anyway, that's supposed to work. So if you like, you know, open the door without initiating the call, it's supposed to generate an alarm. And then, so those are the settings and the smart client. And then um, it, it gives you a history of the calls. So if you click this little button in the taskbar, door station menu, you can go to a call history, which is pretty handy. So it gives you the time and date of the call. Yeah. Oh, and that's me talking to myself. <laughs> so it um, gives you a history of the calls and the video associated with that, that call. There we go. So um, that's kind of it. That's the uh, feature with the, the access optimizer once you load it with their access uh, door station. So it's, I think it's a pretty cool feature, um, something we've been kind of looking forward to for a long time. Um, another, this is kind of relating to the access optimizer. One thing that would be cool, and I think Stephen might have brought this up in, in um, a workplace, or I think that's where I saw it, is there's no... So if you load the access optimizer, there's no like custom installation. Um, basically it loads all the plugins um, that could be available with access products on your XProtect system. Um, it would be cool to just have like a custom installation option where you could, you know, pick just the, you know, the, the door entry station, you know, plug in, but um, you know, that's kind of an off topic, off topic, but um, yeah. Uh, it looks like there's some questions. So that's it for the demo. Um, let's see if there's any questions here. How do you how do you configure it in the smart client? Drag the door station into it like a map or something versus normal camera. Yeah, so it's, yeah, you just load the plugin and just drag the, the camera over to the, the view group that you set up. Um, Ove, does Access Optimizer do something else as well? I heard the name before, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, so the Access Optimizer basically um, on an X Protect installation, like if you have Access Door Stations or Access Radar, um, there's some, a couple other things. Uh, the windshield wiper on Access Cameras, um, the one where it shakes the water off, I can't remember what that's called, but basically it has you know, all the uh, autofocus, uh, focus um, of PTZ cameras. So it just gives you more um, functionality with um, access um, devices on your XProtect system. I'll kind of show you what that looks like in the, I know that's not what the feature is about, but anyway. So you, there's an updater. Um, if you have like the radar, this is the camera assistant. So if you have access cameras, it, it'll give you all the access devices and access to the web interface. But anyway. Yep. So that's about it, guys. Um, you know, thanks for joining. If you have any more questions on this particular plugin of the access optimizer and the door station, just, just let us know. guys take care thank you for joining today